Hi, Al Franken here. Uh, this is my fourth YouTube video, and I've been talking about some pretty serious topics here. Uh, voting rights, uh, the filibusters, Citizens United, right-wing disinformation, all serious, important topics into which I've attempted to inject some irony and a bit of sarcasm and maybe a pointed joke or two. But the one today will be a little different. It's about crisis intervention training. You might have heard crisis intervention training raised during the Chauvin trial, and just a word about that. Even after the welcome verdict last week, I just could not celebrate. I, I hope the conviction is an inflection point, but I worry that this was just the exception that proves the rule. Not only was it on video taken by this very brave young woman, girl really, but it captured a very slow, deliberate murder. And usually these are shootings. And defense attorneys argue, well, this happened in a, in a flash, in a moment, and the defendant was afraid for his life. He, he thought the Hershey bar was a gun. And they get off. I, I don't know. We will have to see. I hope I'm wrong. Now, I bring up crisis intervention training, or CIT, because it's been shown over and over again to reduce the number of these tragic, senseless deaths. It trains cops to recognize when they have entered a situation fueled by a mental health crisis, in many cases by, by drugs or alcohol. And it teaches cops how to assess a situation and how best to de-escalate it. And this saves lives and very well could have saved George Floyd's. If you look at the video from the Chauvin trial, the part where the rookie cops are trying to force George Floyd into the patrol car. What happened there was a travesty. When Mr. Floyd is saying, I'm, I'm claustrophobic, and he's handcuffed and agitated and panicked and struggling, the response is just to say, okay, we're not going to put you in the patrol car. This is not a big deal. This is a $20 bill. Let's just get out of the car, and we'll all stand here and talk, all right? Now, in most cities that do this right, those cops would call a crisis intervention team. Those are cops who have had 40 hours of crisis intervention training who know how to defuse these situations. They get there right away, and they know how to bring the temperature down. I became aware of CIT as a member of the Senate Judiciary and Health Committees where I developed an interest in the nexus of law enforcement and mental health. Crisis intervention training had previously received federal funding with bipartisan support, but in 2013, federal funding was expiring and I wrote a bill to fund it and to expand upon it in a number of ways to increase veterans courts, to, to increase mental health courts and, and diversion. So instead of going to jail where people with mental illness just get worse, get them treatment, which is actually a lot cheaper. I visited a few places that had really committed to CIT. One of them was Columbia Heights, a Minneapolis suburb. Their police department had been giving every single one of their officers the full 40-hour crisis intervention training. That's unusual. I had a round table there and the city attorney started off by saying that the police chief apologized for not being there, but the chief wanted me to know that the day after he completed his training, he didn't kill a guy he otherwise would have killed. And I said, well, okay, um, could I have a more garden variety story? So this policewoman raised her hand and she says, 
Well, about three or four months ago, I was out on the street and I heard a woman screaming and I assumed it was a domestic dispute and I went to check it out, but uh, it was just this woman screaming and as I approached her, she backed up and grabbed onto this railing on a wall that had like a 15 foot drop to a playground and she threatened to let go. She wouldn't have killed herself but would have been badly hurt. So I used my training to talk her off the wall and she told me she had been sexually abused as a kid and that the abuser had left town but that he had recently returned. So I told her that I, uh, I knew a place where she could get help and got her an appointment at the uh, community mental health clinic and then about two weeks ago, I was working a street fair and this woman walks up to me and says, you saved my life. And I said, okay, I was kind of looking for a garden variety story. And she said, look, I have not unholstered my gun once in my career, but I use this every day. So those were the stories I was hearing. I introduced my bill in the Judiciary Committee and I got quite a few Republican co-sponsors and it passed out of committee almost unanimously. But Tom Coburn of Oklahoma put a hold on it, which killed it because it wasn't an important enough bill to take up all the floor time it takes to overcome a hold. Now, Coburn retires and I reintroduce the bill and another Republican puts a hold on it because he thinks it costs too much, which was ridiculous. But finally I get it done by slipping it into some must pass piece of legislation at the end of a session at a much higher funding level, by the way. So let me tell you why the funding level issue was just ridiculous. CIT saves a crap load of money. Take Miami-Dade County. Over the last 10 years, they've implemented a crisis intervention program that has saved lives and hundreds of millions of dollars for the city and county. Last year, I had Miami-Dade County Judge Steve Leifman on my podcast, the Al Franken podcast. You should listen to my podcast. I know you have nothing to look at, uh, but listen while you're cooking or, or cleaning uh, your place. Your place is a mess, by the way. In the five years before implementing their CIT training, the city of Miami had 90 police shootings, but only 30 in the first five years following the CIT training. And in the last five years, as more police had been trained and the culture of the department changed, the number dropped to 16. And because of that, the city was able to save millions of dollars from fewer lawsuit settlements and improving their bond rating, saving tens of millions, not to mention the human suffering we see every day in this country. Crisis intervention training is really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of police reform and our criminal justice system. Almost a year ago, I had Chief Charles Ramsey, former DC and Philadelphia police chief on the podcast. And your place is a disgrace, by the way. Chief Ramsey, had been co-chair of Obama's task force on 21st century policing, which of course Trump disbanded and all of whose recommendations he ignored. And there were some pretty obvious stuff. Law enforcement agencies should create a workforce with a broad range of diversity. All police departments must collect and report data on the number of people they shoot and make CIT training a part of both basic recruit and in-service officer training. And there's also very common sense reforms in the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. 
such as putting some limit on qualified immunity for cops. This one's complicated. It's about whether someone can sue a cop. But from what I understand, there may be a compromise in the works where a victim or her family can sue the police department. Look, the crazy thing is how awful the world can be. It can drive you nuts. It drives me nuts. But you can't give up. You can't. And I hope you can find a way to make a small difference in, in your community, whatever it is. Okay? And, and listen to my damn podcast. Well, I'm exhausted. I'll see you next time. Thank you.